The opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Cable 14, its sponsors or its shareholders, Kojiko Cable, Shaw Cable and Source Cable Limited. Well, hello and welcome to the Monday, December 12th edition of For the Record, Crime Stoppers Connection. I am your host, Mike Fortune, and I apologize if I nod off just a little bit. Got off a plane uh, yesterday. I'm expecting my siesta to kick in at any minute from Mexico. So <laughs> great to be back here in Canada and uh, great to be back in the Cable 14 studios. Holiday time is just around the corner. Hard to believe it is here again. We're out shopping, we're hustling, we're bustling, and uh, we have a lot of new gadgets, TVs, gizmos, you name it. How do we protect ourselves? How do we protect our house, our car? Oh, the good folks from Crime Stoppers are here to talk to us about that. We're going to start things off with the program coordinator of Crime Stoppers. It's Debbie McGreal Dinning. Debbie, great to see you again. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having us back. It is always a pleasure. You're producing the show. You're doing a great job. Looking forward to get some very helpful tips from you fine folks. And of course, Sergeant Barry Munger with the Hamilton Police Services. Barry, you've been on the force for 22 years. That's, That's a correct, long time, Mike. my friend. Yes, it's a very long time. So. In those uh, years, you have learned a lot, you've seen a lot. Um, how should people be protecting themselves this time of year? Well, it's tricky. Uh, there's a common conception out there this time of year that break and enters to residences actually increases. And in fact, that's false. There's only a very tiny increase in break and enters to homes. But there are some crimes that do show significant increase during the holiday season. And when we compare crime stats from the last three Decembers to other months in the year, we can see that the biggest increase is actually in theft from autos. It climbs about 40% during the holiday season. Frauds go up about 11% and shoplifting goes up also about 11%. So I think looking at those statistics, it makes it very clear that our biggest area of concern during the holiday season is to keep your automobile safe. And we were talking in the green room just before we came into studio here, Barry. A lot of what people can do is just start to use some common sense uh, when they are out shopping and be aware of their surroundings. Absolutely, it's really about being uh, prudent, cautious, with an alert mind, knowing your environment. For example, don't park your car in a dark area, you know, park it in a well-lit area. Don't leave valuables within sight. So if someone looks in the window of your car and sees your purse or your phone, you've just enhanced the likelihood that you're gonna be a victim. If you have valuables, put them in the trunk, lock them out of sight. And part of this too, it can be CDs for example, sometimes these thieves, maybe they're not even stealing stuff, they just want to vandalize a car. They, they see a CD, they probably don't even want the CD, they want to vandalize the car somehow and they get something out of it. So there's so many things that these people should be aware of. Um, when, you, when you do put stuff in a trunk or that maybe that has a big window to it, cover that bag up with something as well, right? A, keep an extra blanket in your car maybe? Absolutely. Out of sight, out of mind. And that yeah. goes for your home too. I mean, people have a big Christmas tree in their front window and they put the presents all around it and you're just welcoming that suspect to come up to your window, look into your living room and see all those presents that may soon end up in their vehicle. Yeah. And, and Debbie, how does all this now tie into Crime Stoppers? What can the general public do uh, when they see maybe a suspicious character walking around a, a parking lot at one of our local malls, for example? Yeah, and like Sergeant uh, Munger was saying, all of the, uh, the crimes he's talking about, be it um, break and enters to residential homes or entries into vehicles, those are all reportable to obviously the police, um, but also to Crime Stoppers. So if people um, aren't wanting to go the traditional way of reporting to police for, for whatever reasons, be it um, apathy, um, fear of retribution, or um, uh, fear of reprisal and perhaps they're too close to the situation but they have the information that needs to get to the police, Crime Stoppers is an excellent avenue. So um, when they are reporting these crimes, the kinds of things that um, are going to be helpful for law enforcement to investigate are uh, things that Sergeant Munger talked about. I mean, be cognizant of your surroundings. If you do see a suspicious vehicle, a suspicious person in your area, um, whether it's at the mall or uh, near your home, you want to make notes of what that person's wearing, what that person looks like, what the vehicle may look like, um, even possibly get a plate um, for that vehicle. 
all of that information are pieces to a puzzle that you may not think are important, but once reported to police um, could be put together and, and perhaps there's been other entries or other similar types of crimes that we can um, put together and actually uh, be able to investigate and, uh, and solve. Debbie, we're in the age of technology, as we all know. Everyone has an iPhone, a Blackberry, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. You said, you know, any information somebody can give. Um, do you or does the force recommend that, hey, I'm seeing something a little suspicious here. Can I take a quick picture so I have some documentation that way? Or should they just be typing something into their BlackBerry iPhone like a license plate? Or should they take a photo? You let us know. Well, I think, like you said, in the green room, we had some discussion before coming to the show here. Um, we don't like to promote anyone becoming completely involved in, um, you know, uh, putting themselves at risk at all in dealing with uh, a potential criminal. Um, so I'm just saying even just making a mental note of, of what you're seeing around you, if there is a suspect that you're, um, you're observing or even just someone suspicious in an area, just try to make a mental note of what they're wearing. I wouldn't recommend, no, um, taking your phone out and, um, you know, getting towards that person or close to that person and, and putting yourself at risk. Okay, no, that's fair. And I, I had to ask the question, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Sergeant, you mentioned fraud uh, goes up a little bit during this time of year. Yep. What type of fraud are we talking about? Well, typically there's people trying to use someone else's debit card or credit card and or cash a check that probably doesn't belong to them. Any way that they can receive some extra additional income for the month that would help them to maybe purchase Christmas presents and or maybe just uh, allow them to get things that they otherwise wouldn't have. Um, they're used to, you know, accustomed to getting and receiving during the Christmas season and I think sometimes criminals try to take advantage of that by enhancing what they're able to obtain. And of course when we think of fraud, we think of um, the, the, the bank cards, the swiping and all that. Obviously never let people see your pin codes and all that. Should people be aware of when they go to a bank machine, for example, if there's a piece of plastic that doesn't look like it should be there, it might be a card reader, I don't know. Again, be aware of where you're swiping your card and those surroundings as well. Absolutely, and, and it is not uh, uncommon. It, it does happen. They have um, fake plastic fronts that actually glue on or stick on over top of the existing ATM machine. Mm -hmm. And when your card goes through, it also films the pin numbers that you enter and it reads the magnetic strip on your card so they can later reproduce that card so that they can then go and make withdrawals from your account. Sounds awfully exhausting to be a criminal if you ask me. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Yeah. Yes, um, it is. It, it, it is. But again, we have the fine folks here. And of course, we have Crime Stoppers, which, Debbie, is so important. And we're going to be speaking with Trish Hoban in a little bit. Hamilton has done a super job with that. But so much of that also has to do with the community. And, and the community, again, we've talked about it the last eight minutes now, being aware. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're, we're so dependent on our community members. Um, and, and when you're calling into Crime Stoppers, just an important note, Mike, just um, we want our, our watchers, our viewers to be uh, educated about the program. Um, victims cannot call into the program because um, by the nature of the program, it is anonymous. So I, I wouldn't encourage um, if you are a victim of fraud or um, any kind of break-in or you do know, you need to go the traditional way of, of reporting it to law enforcement and, and the police. Um, Crime Stoppers would not be an avenue in that case. Um, but if you are reporting to Crime Stoppers, like I said, um, the more specific the information the more information we have, the better it is um, once we pass that on to the proper authorities for it to be investigated. And you always remain anonymous. Um, we give you a five-digit ID number. You hang on to that number and you um, randomly call back in four or five weeks to see if that information where it is and how it's been investigated. And we constantly keep you in, um, informed as to where that information has gone to. Yeah, and you guys do a great job. And uh, that the job that the community has done, the job that Crime Stoppers has done in partnership with the uh, local police officers, uh, paid off in a big way uh, recently. And my guest now is Trisha Hoban. Trisha, I've known you for many years. You must be very proud about this. Um, Crime Stoppers Hamilton was presented with a very prestigious award. Why don't you tell us a, a little bit about that and, and what it means to the city of Hamilton to receive this? I certainly will, and uh, thanks for that, Mike. Uh, nice to see you again. Um, recently at uh, Crime Stoppers International Conference in Jamaica, we always knew that our, crime, our tipsters were the best here in Hamilton and in Ontario. It was proved that uh, internationally they're the best uh, tipsters. The information that we've received led to $4.6 million um, in drugs and recovered property taken off the streets. And uh, that went towards a prestigious uh, productivity award that we received in Jamaica uh, just in the last month or so. 
And uh, just a couple other stats here. Maybe while I read these stats up, we can take a, a quick look at that award. I know you brought it in. Uh, 108 arrests and five firearms were taken off the streets. Is that correct? That's correct. And as I said before, uh, $4.6 million worth of drugs and property recovered off the streets of Hamilton. Yeah. And there we saw that award that's going to be hanging prominently in the Crime Stoppers offices, uh, no doubt. Tell us about how important the success is uh, for Hamilton in 2011? Um, well, we've already, I'm, I'm delighted to say that we've already surpassed last year's figures and uh, we're already at $1.5 million, $1 million worth of drugs and property recovered above the 4.6 and with 30% uh, increase in arrests already made. And we're, uh, we've still got a few weeks left, Mike. So hopefully those, uh, those statistics will actually improve by the 31st of December. And we can rely on our tipsters in Hamilton. They're a great resource for us. And uh, we want to thank them because it's a community uh, program and it's the community that gives us the information. Tricia, it's great that we have all these numbers and we're, we're breaking these records, but uh, as a viewer and maybe even here as the host, is it a little disturbing knowing that the numbers seem to still be going up, that there is still that much crime and that much opportunity for people to do illegal acts, sell illegal drugs, so on and so forth? Well, I wouldn't say it's discouraging. I would again stress that um, those figures that I've given you, um, it's, a, it's proactive because that means that we're getting correct information from the community and we can then in turn pass it on to the police. So as far as we're concerned, our statistics do go up, but it's successful statistics, meaning that more criminals uh, and more cases are cleared around the Hamilton area. Well, that is wonderful news. And again, to you and your staff, and you're a small group, um, very little funding. I know you're always doing corporate fundraisers, trying to br bring in some more uh, money so you can give away these great rewards. Uh, we thank you very much, Trisha, for coming in. And actually, Thanks, to Mike. the whole panel, uh, Debbie McGreal Dinning, uh, Sergeant Monger, and Trisha Hoban, you guys are fantastic stuff. If you want to get involved with Crime Stoppers and, and help them out with some corporate sponsorships, I strongly suggest you get in touch with their head office. Uh, they're located downtown. Talk to Trisha as well. Uh, they're always looking for an opportunity to make a few extra bucks so we can continue to get these criminals off the streets here in the great city of Hamilton. Thanks again for watching For the Record, Crime Stoppers Connection. Happy New Year, happy holidays, and we will see you in 2012. Take care, Hamilton.